Hello and welcome back everybody, welcome back to the wastelands of Fallout New Vegas. Today we're going to be going over five unique weapons that you can get early on that will make the early game and honestly most of the game a lot easier for you if you would like to get these. We're not going to be going over non-unique weapons in this list, although I could do a list like that because there is quite a few really good weapons that you can get early on in New Vegas to help your journey go a little bit easier. These are unique weapons, and none of these are going to be from the DLCs. So this isn't going to be counting all of the starting stuff that you can begin with, because otherwise I could just list out four things right there and just one more to add to the list and you're good to go. So let's hop right into the list. The very first one is Chance's Knife. This one can be found just north of Good Springs. You do need a shovel in order to get this because it isn't a grave. So simply do the tutorial, and once you go and fight the geckos with Sunny, you can pick up the shovel there and then head north. You may want to grab the 9mm submachine gun in Doc Mitchell's house beforehand because that can help you against the Cazadors, as well as if you have the Mercenary's Grenade Launcher from the Mercenary Pack, that can also help you against the Cazadors early on. You don't necessarily need to fight them, as if you find a Stealth Boy early on, that can certainly help. And then simply go to the top of this hill, get yourself Chance's Knife, and this is arguably one of the best melee weapons in the entire game. It already has good damage, good DPS. It doesn't have very high requirements either, only requiring 50 melee and three strength in order to use it. So most builds will be able to use this even if you're not going with a dedicated melee build. It's still quite strong. It has an above average crit multiplier by two times rather than the standard one time, so you're more likely to hit crits. On top of all that, you can sneak this into areas. It only weighs one weight in total. And it's not particularly difficult to find combat knives even early on to fix this one. Even if you are having trouble finding combat knives for this, it doesn't matter too much because making weapon repair kits is still a pretty viable option, assuming you have enough repair to do that. Even on top of all that, it still has some major advantages for being a combat knife. Since it is a combat knife, it's affected by two perks, Cowboy and Grunt, both are available at level 8 which buffs its damage up even more because these stack on top of one another. So you can have a ton of damage and a ton of damage per second with this weapon. It, like I said, it's one of the best melee weapons in the entire game. It's definitely one of the best starting weapons, and you can just run this through the entire game if you would like, and you will just absolutely destroy everything. So yeah, Chance's Knife, really solid starting weapon, probably one of the best starting weapons, and one of the easiest to get starting weapons. Our second weapon is Lucky. This is the 357 revolver that is found at the Steve Bison Hotel. In order to get this, you do need 75 lockpicking, but that's the only requirement to it. You can't get it any other way. I would recommend looking at different vendors early on so that you can get a lock picking magazine if you plan on getting something like comprehension at level four then this will even be better because that will give you plus 20 to your lock picking you can also put on clothes that buff your perception to get this higher as well as you could take chems like mentats to get even higher perception that's what i did in this run and i was able to get it at i think level three you could also go with the skilled and the good natured traits early on too that way you can buff up your skills even higher if you feel like that's necessary being the unique 357 it does pretty decent damage it has good accuracy it has very low requirements not requiring any guns whatsoever and only requiring three strength so it's a very easy to handle weapon it does good damage per shot it does pretty good damage per second it has an above average crit multiplier at two and a half times low action point cost so it's also good on a vats build and it's fairly easy to repair because 357s are not incredibly rare to find it also has decent health for a handgun so it shouldn't break super quick for you on top of that, the bullets are pretty nice that you can throw into it. Standard 357 rounds do hit fairly hard. 38 Special makes it so that your gun's health lasts quite a bit longer, even though you'll be doing a little bit reduced damage. And if you plan on taking the hand loader perk, you can throw on the jacketed flat point bullets, which are just one of the best uh, upgrades to this weapon, as it just makes it so your weapon has armor breaking and more damage on it. So it is a very solid weapon early on, and really solid if you want to take this to Big Mountain. If you're planning on doing that DLC early on, you find a ton of 357 rounds, so taking Lucky is a really good option. You can also sneak this into places too, I should mention that because that's another bonus to Lucky. The only downside to Lucky is that it kind of has a slow reload because you do have to reload one round each at a time since it is a gate loading revolver and that does make it difficult if you have low agility. If you do have low agility, then I'd recommend not even bothering reloading it. Fire it out entirely and then switch to a different weapon and switch back. That's a faster reload than actually waiting for the reload animation. Oh, and on top of that, it is also affected by the cowboy perk, so if you wanted to take Chance's Knife, 
You can also take Lucky, grab the Cowboy perk at level 8, and then you'll have more damage with both of them. So that's a solid option too early game. Our third weapon is one of my personal favorites. This is the Rat Slayer. This is the unique Varmint Rifle. You get this inside of Brock Flower Cave that is located right here on the map. It's kind of out of the way, but it's not too difficult to walk to. You can get to it fairly fast if you know where it is. There is a little bit of an issue with this one similar to Chance's Knife where you do have to deal with some potentially strong enemies early on. The giant rats in there are actually pretty scary. I used a Stealth Boy to get past it in this particular playthrough, but if you didn't have that, things like Frag Mines certainly help against them. And if you can lure them out one at a time and kill them, then that's also a pretty good option. It has extremely low requirements, needing zero guns and only three strength, just like Lucky. So most builds are gonna be able to use this very early on. It has good damage per shot, Okay damage per second, it's still not that great because it is a bolt action, so it takes a little bit longer to fire. It has an insanely high crit modifier, being a 5 times crit modifier, being one of the highest in the whole game. So hitting crits with this thing is very, very likely. Action points are not really the best for this, this isn't really a VATS build weapon. Its spread is incredibly low though, so it is very accurate at basically any range, and it has all the modifications that the regular varmint rifle can have on it. So it has the extended magazine, taking it from a 5 round magazine to an 8 round magazine, a large scope on it giving you good range as well as it gives you the night vision capability which is pretty nice, and it also has a suppressor on it which suppressors in the Fallout games are kind of overpowered because sneaking around at a long distance is just strong in general in these games most enemies can't figure out where you are so you can take multiple shots at them and this is also a 556 gun 556 is one of the best bullets in terms of just its variety you can have standard rounds you can have 223 rounds you can have match rounds armor piercing rounds hollow point rounds there's so many different bullets that you can throw into this gun so that it kind of works on just about everything and it does really well early on and even throughout the mid game the rat slayer is also pretty good. Moving on to our fourth weapon, we have that gun. That gun is the unique or kind of unique 556 pistol. They were added after that gun was added into the game, so I, I guess it is the unique version of them. This can be found in Novak. This one you can buy from the Dino Bite gift shop if you would like. It's not that expensive, only costing about a thousand ish caps. Depending on how high your barter level is, it could be higher or lower than that. You don't actually need to buy it though. You can just steal it if you would like. All you have to do is pick a lock nearby. That is a very easy lock, so you're going to be able to get into it regardless of your lock picking level and then just swipe it off of there. This does have higher requirements than the other weapons we've talked about, requiring 50 guns and 6 strength, so it does take a bit more. It does good damage, good damage per second. It has an above average crit modifier at 2.5 times, that's pretty nice. Fairly low action point cost and is fairly accurate as well as it reloads fairly quick. It does weigh a decent amount for a handgun at 5, but that's okay. It takes the 5.56 five, round, which we've already talked about with the Rat Slayer. It has a large amount of variety thanks to that, which is always awesome. You can throw in different rounds and use this. Weirdly enough, you can't actually sneak this weapon into casinos, but you can sneak the 5.56 five, pistol into casinos. I don't know why, because they both seem exactly the same size and dimensions and everything. Maybe it's just because this one's a silver colored gun, sort of, or a worn gun. This one is also affected by the cowboy perk since it is a revolver. That is really nice, so if you want to take that one again early on, you get a pretty big advantage for it. Alright, and then the last gun, which is another one of my personal favorite weapons, and just, I would argue one of the strongest weapons in the game, this is this machine. This one is a little bit of an oddball gun because it's not actually part of a quest or at least of a standard quest where you would actually get a mission for it and get experience. This is an unmarked quest that is at Camp McCarran. You can just run there right away. You do need at least 50 science in order to do uh, what I'm going to do for this weapon. There's a couple ways to get it though. What you have to do is go to the back of Camp McCarran to where Contreras is and then either do his mission, which is talking to him, waiting a large amount of time. Um, I remember this quest being extremely buggy on consoles, so I wouldn't really recommend doing it this way because the game would crash fairly often or freeze very often. On PC that can also be an issue, but mods remedy that quite a bit. The easier way to do this is simply go upstairs and hack into Contreras' computer. This requires you to have 50 science, so you do have to at least have that much or buff your science up to a certain point. It's pretty easy to find programmer digest magazines, especially since you're already at New Vegas. You can just go talk to the various vendors. I'm sure somebody has one there, as well as you could also buff things like your intelligence through drugs and through clothing. That way you get enough to actually hack into the computer. Once you hack into the computer, you get the weapons manifest. Once you have this, you can go and talk to Lieutenant Boyd for it. 
and just tell her that Contreras is yeah, ripping off the NCR for very stuff. She'll arrest him and she will give you this gun. This machine is an amazing gun. It's probably one of the strongest guns in the game. It does require fairly high stats because it requires 75 uh, guns in order to use it effectively as well as 6 strength. It does hit quite hard per shot because it's a 308 weapon which can be a little bit difficult to find 308s early on but into the mid game it's extremely easy to find 308s. It has really high DPS, it has a fast rate of fire, it has a fast reload, it does good crit damage. And it actually has pretty decent action point cost too so it's pretty good for a VATS build. It does have more spread than some of the other rifles, so it's not one of the most accurate, but if you just plan on hip firing this at medium range, it's quite effective. It also does kind of weigh a decent amount at nine and a half weight, so it is one of the heavier rifles overall, but it does have one of the highest health pools out of any weapon in the game. It takes forever to break this thing, and it's not particularly difficult to buy battle rifles if you would like to repair it that way. It's also not difficult to get weapon repair kits in order to fix it up and you can use this machine for the entire game. It works well on just about everything. Since it shoots the 308 round, it's very similar to the 5.56 weapons where it has a ton of variety. You can put in regular rounds, you can put in the jacketed soft points if you go with the uh, hand loader perk, which are just a straight upgrade from regular rounds. You could put in hollow point rounds if you need to use them against soft body targets. You can put in armor piercing rounds if you need to use them against armored targets. It's just extremely flexible. Tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.